I have the Google Pixel 7 Pro here. And in today's video, I'll be showing you how to install the bleeding edge build of Android Canary on your supported Pixel hardware. As of recording this video, the Canary branch can be flashed on the entire Pixel 6 series, the entire Pixel 7 series, all of the devices within the Pixel 8 series, and the whole Pixel 9 series as well. This includes the original Pixel Fold and the Pixel Tablet too. Google is not making it very easy to install Android Canary right now. And that seems to be by design. This means that it's not going to be as simple as opting into receiving an over the air firmware update like they do with the Android beta program. Instead, it's going to be similar to the developer preview builds. So you're going to have to flash these to your device using ADB and Fastboot tools or with the Android Flash Tool website. And we'll be opting for the latter option here today since it tends to be the easiest, but both methods will require you to have a desktop or a laptop PC and using the Android flash tool, like we'll be doing here today, that will require a browser that supports web USB, like Chrome or Edge does right now. You're also going to need to have the bootloader of your Google Pixel device unlocked. If this is not something that you are familiar with, or maybe you just need a refresher, then I'll have a dedicated guide linked below that will walk you through the entire process. It will be for unlocking the bootloader for a specific Pixel phone, but those steps that I outline in the video will work on all modern phones and tablets from Google. Just be aware that unlocking the bootloader will wipe all of the data from your phone. Even the simple process of flashing the Canary build of Android, that's going to wipe all of the data from your device. So be sure that you have backed up your important information ahead of time. You're also going to need to have USB debugging mode enabled on your phone or tablet. This is a toggle that is found within the hidden developer options menu. And I also have a guide showing all of those steps involved here on the channel as well. So I can be sure to include all mentioned links in the pinned comment here so that they are easy for everyone to find. When you're ready to begin, we're going to make sure that our phone is connected to the PC with a USB cable. And then we're going to pull up the Android Flash Tool website. You're going to see a window pop up asking you to deny or allow ADB access. We're going to click on that blue allow ADB access button. If you do not see your device listed here and you are sure that you have completed all of the required steps mentioned earlier, then it may be due to some USB related feature, meaning you may just need to try a different USB port. As I've seen, some devices have difficulty connecting through certain USB ports, like version 3.0, stuff like that. But it may also be due to the USB cable that you're using. So it's gonna be a good idea to try a different one if you're continuing to have trouble with the first cable that you tried. And lastly, it may actually be due to some USB driver related issues. So if you have not installed the USB driver from Google, then that's a good place to start. But you may end up needing to reinstall it though, if there is a conflict with how it was initially installed. When everything falls into place though, you'll see your Google Pixel smartphone or tablet appear in this list. 
when you click on this drop down menu. You may need to click on the add device button here and then select it from this pop up before it will appear selected from here. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is select the build. So if it has automatically selected a build for you, then we click on the select a different build. But for some of us, this is going to see going to be the screen that we see after we select our device. If you know the branch target or build ID, then we can enter that information here. But you'll likely also see dedicated sections for Android Canary releases, Android QPR preview, aka beta releases, or our public stable branch. Since we are here to install the latest Canary, we're going to select this in that list. Now, I highly recommend that you click on the pencil icon right here so that you can change the optional parameters before we flash the build. By default, the Android flash tool is going to recommend that you wipe the device, that you relock the bootloader, and that you force flash all the partitions. The first and third of these default settings are actually required. So we're going to keep the wipe device and force flash all partitions checked. However, it's the lock bootloader option that I actually recommend you uncheck. If you are 100% certain and you understand the risks, then sure, you can go ahead and keep this checked if you want these aren't even considered to be beta builds of Android that you're going to install. And you could basically call it an alpha release. And there can be some random critical bugs present that can cause your phone to go into a boot loop. And in some cases, you won't even be able to access fast boot mode or even recovery mode. I've seen it happen with the developer preview builds in the past. Hell, I've even seen it with the Android beta releases too. But if that happens and your bootloader is unlocked, then at least you can recover the phone by reflashing the bootloader and recovery partitions, which will allow you to get your phone back up and running. But again, the choice is up to you. So for me, I'm going to make sure the lock bootloader option is unchecked. And when you're ready to begin, we're going to click on the blue install build button that we see on the screen. It's going to ask you to confirm. So we do have our Pixel 7 Pro that we're going to flash. And we do have the Android Canary build. And we do not have the relock bootloader option selected. So I'm going to confirm and I'm going to accept. And now we play the waiting game. The amount of time that it will take for the Android flash tool to finish installing the Canary build will vary depending on a variety of factors like the speed of your PC, the speed of the connection from your PC to the phone, even the speed of your phone and its internal storage. If you get the pop-up here telling you to reselect your device, click on that option, reselect our device from this pop-up menu, and click on connect again. Your best plan here is to just let the Android Flash tool do the majority of the work for us. And that means making sure that we do not touch the phone or the USB cable unless instructed to do so, just like we saw there. Just like it says here, do not unplug the phone, 
and do not interact with the device either unless this page tells us to. We just need to make sure that our PC has a stable and secure connection to the phone. So it's almost always better to just keep the phone on the desk or something flat and to not mess with it unless told to do so here. I have gone through and skipped through most of the installation process, but when the Android flash tool has completed, you will notice the phone reboot on its own and you'll see this message here telling you that the install is complete. As your phone boots back up, you're free to finally unplug that USB cable. Just remember that your first boot back into Android will take a bit longer than normal, since we just wiped all of the data from that device. And once you get back to the Android activation screen, you're going to be greeted with this Android Canary program pop-up box. So you know that installing Canary was successful. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip through this activation process real quick. And now we have fully booted into the Android Canary build. There are a number of new features that are actively being worked on by Google right now. Some are hoping to see these included in Android 16, which will be released later on this year. But we have to remember that these new features are in very early stages of development, and they could take an extra year or two before they are finally ready for the stable version. So, if this guide was able to help you to get Android Canary installed onto your device, I would appreciate it if you gave the video a like to help spread the word. And please, do not forget to subscribe to the channel either for more Android modding tips like this.